Well, good insert time of day here. Whoops, sorry, I don't think I was meant to read that bit out. Welcome to another edition of 101 Facts. I'm Sam, and I'm here to talk to you today about one of my best friends. It's all-knowing, all-present, and always there for me with videos of cats dancing and easy access to junk food to make me feel better after any day. Its name is the internet, and I think it's going to be a pretty big thing once it's up and running. But in the meantime, download some facts into your brain from the server of my mouth. This is 101 Facts About the Internet. Number one! The internet is defined by our friend the dictionary as a vast computer network linking smaller computer networks worldwide. It's also how somebody from the north of England explains where the ball should go in soccer. Number two! The internet as we know it today, like Her Majesty the Queen of England, has more than one birthday. One of them is on October 29th, 1969, when the first internet message was sent and received over a system called ARPANET. Number three. ARPANET may sound like a Radiohead album, but it actually stands for Advanced Research Project Agency Network. Number four. ARPANET was first created to ensure that military bases could still communicate with each other in the event of a nuclear strike from Russia. So, nothing to do with cat videos then? Number five. The first message ever sent over ARPANET was the word login. That was a bit anticlimactic, wasn't it? In fact, it wasn't even that. That's what they tried to send, but it crashed, and just the word low came through. And lo and behold, the internet was born. Kind of. Not really, actually. I just kind of wanted to make that joke work. Number six. ARPANET's technology ate its cyber greens and grew and grew, but it was eventually replaced by the National Science Foundation's liberated and all-round sexier version of ARPANET called NSFNET in 1991. Number seven. The other birthday it has is in March of 1989, when Sir Tim Berners-Lee proposed merging the up-and-coming internet thing with another technology called hypertext to make exchanging information that little bit easier. Number eight. Believe it or not, his boss rejected it first time round, calling it vague but exciting. Which is, by coincidence, what my Tinder profile says. Number 9. Soon enough, in October 1990, Berners-Lee developed the World Wide Web and built it using a Next computer. He was originally thinking of calling it the Information Mesh or the Information Mine. Just think, instead of see you online, it could have been see you down the mine. Classic. Number 10. This picture was the first picture to be ever uploaded onto the World Wide Web. It's of an all-female comedy band made up of women working at CERN. That photoshopping is just magnificent, isn't it? Number 11. You won't believe what's on the first website ever. It will blow your mind. This is the first website ever. Are you ready for it? Here it comes. There. Sorry, I had to give it a bit of a clickbait build-up to, you know, bring it forward to modern times. Number 12. Berners-Lee then released the code he crafted as public domain software in 1993. Basically, without Sir Tim, you wouldn't have eBay, Netflix and or Chilling, or even this video. What a bloody hero. Number 13. Nowadays, the World Wide Web and the internet are, it's fair to say, shit hot. It reached 50 million users in just five years. That old relic, television, whatever that is, took 13 years to do that. Number 14. The internet can spread its technological tentacles all over Earth, with 3.3 billion users worldwide. I counted them all for this video and I'm exhausted. Number 15. The most interweb connected continent is North America, with 87.9% of the population consuming the internet as enthusiastically as they do Cheese Whiz. Number 16. However, 47.8% of all internet traffic actually comes from Asia. Number 17. The least byte downloading continent is Africa, with 27% of the population using the web. Number 18. This could soon change, as Jesse Eisenberg lookalike and Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg plans to beam internet access down into Africa from the sky using aircraft. Number 19. Now let's cut to the fjords of Finland. Ah, oh, aren't they lovely? Finland was the first country on the planet to make broadband internet a legal right way back in 2010. Let's hope that law will never finish. Oh, I'm so sorry, what am I doing? Number 20. The famously liberal and forward-thinking country of North Korea has its own intranet with just 5,500 state-censored sites. The actual internet can only be accessed by university students and government officials. Hello, if you're watching, Kim. Number 21. 
The average tea sipping Brit spends 31 hours and 19 minutes a month glued to their computer screen. Not literally. The average US patriot spends 33 hours surfing the web on a desktop. Number 22. Speaking of surfing the web, this is not how you do it. The actual metaphor was coined by writer and librarian Jean Armour Polly, who says the term was inspired by her mouse mat which had a surfing man on it. Number 23. Over half of all internet traffic isn't even from humans at all. Okay, it's not from goats either, but robots. Okay, not robots exactly, but automated processes like search engines and hacker programs. Robots sounded a lot cooler. Number 24. Speaking of naughty hackers, Sophos says that 30,000 websites are hacked every single day. Number 25. Based in San Francisco, the Internet Archive was set up in 1996. It has the Bond villain-esque goal of universal access to all knowledge, and to archive every single web page possible. So far they have a head-melting 15 petabytes of data in their records. Number 26. Way back in the distant year of 2010, before they hired Owen Wilson and Vince Vaughn as interns, Google guesstimated that the internet is about 5 million terabytes of data in total. And Google had only indexed 0.04% of the entire web, so there's a lot more than that going around. Most of it must be John Cena videos at this point. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Number 27. One fateful night in August 2013, Google services dropped for about four minutes. In this time, the world's total net traffic dipped by a massive 40%. Number 28. Webcams have brought joy and lots and lots of retrospective regrets to the people of the internet, but what was the first one streaming pictures of, do you think? Well, no, it's not that, and you need to clean your mind out, but it was actually of a coffee pot at the University of Cambridge in 1993. Number 29. They created their stream, which had a new image three times per minute, to check there was coffee in the pot at their labs. Millions of people watched the stream, fascinated by this little coffee pot that could. Ten years later, the pot was then sold on eBay for £3,350. Number 30. Speaking of eBay sales, the first thing ever sold on eBay was a broken laser pointer for $14.83. Number 31. The internet can be used to find that most treasured and revered of all things. Yes, you can use it to order pizza, but that's actually not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about L-U-R-V-E love. Number 32. The Pew Research Center says that 5% of Americans who are married or in a long-term relationship met their significant other online. One day, Jennifer Lawrence will get Twitter and I'll be part of that 5% too. Well, if I turn American too. Which, you know, I would if she asked me to. Number 33. Yes, online dating can work very well. In fact, too well for some people. Gary Kremen, for instance, founded Match.com and lost his girlfriend after she found a new bit of man crumpet on... You guessed it, Match.com. It's like a modern day Frankenstein story. Number 34. But he does have his own army of children. One million little babbers have been spawned from couples that met each other on Match.com. So they're kind of his children, in a way, right? Number 35. People between the ages of 25 to 45 are more likely to use online dating. Number 36. One in five online daters have asked for help from other people while constructing their profile. If you need a helping hand, feel free to leave a comment below and us dating experts at 101 will help you out. Number 37. Some dating websites use algorithms to try and find you the perfect mate, and they're designed to know you better than you know yourself. That's kind of creepy, but also handy. I'd quite like to know what this rash is. Number 38. Couples who meet online apparently marry sooner, and are said to save around $6,400 by not going on as many pre-marriage dates. Number 39. 41 million love-hungry peeps in the US have tried online dating. Number 40. The sexiest website with the best content on the web actually started out as a dating site in its inception, and that was a little website called YouTube. Number 41. Instant messaging was and still is a great way to keep up to date with friends and feel lonely by how many online people just aren't speaking to you. The meaning of life. The first AOL instant message was sent by Ted Leonsis, later AOL vice chairman, to his wife saying, don't be scared, which is you know, probably the scariest thing you could send to somebody almost anonymously. Number 43. Instant messaging isn't without its faux pas though. 
On the first chatroom interview with CNN, one user logged in as Bill Clinton and declared that he would like to see more pornography on the internet. Which, to be fair, sounds like something he would actually say. Number 44. You can't even think about discussing instant messaging without talking about its older, slower and more professional daddy email. The first email was sent by Ray Tomlinson, who implemented email into ARPANET. He sent it to himself and it said QWERTYOP, which is Danish for famished dragon. Okay, it isn't, it's gibberish, but you believed that for a sec there, didn't you? Number 45. ARPANET was also responsible for the first spam email, which was sent by marketer Gary Thuak, who sent an invitation to see some new computers to 400 people. It didn't even mention penises once, so it clearly didn't start the trend. Number 46. The term spam email comes from a famous Monty Python sketch, in which this word is mentioned, it's fair to say, a bloody lot. This replicates the annoying nature of spam emails, which more often than not unfortunately don't involve as many Vikings. Number 47. Spam makes up about 90% of all emails sent. Number 48. 205 billion emails are sent and received every day. My guess is around 45.6% of them are from services you can't even remember signing up for. Number 49. We all know Gmail now as Google's email service, but originally it belonged to a fat cat that loved lasagna. No, I'm not talking about yo mama, I'm talking about Garfield. Gmail was used for Garfield fans to talk amongst themselves. Google then had to buy the name from Garfield.com. Probably paid in lasagna as well. Oh, God, I want some lasagna now. Number 50. The internet has porn on it. Number 51. As well as porn, the internet is well known for having some pretty effed up stuff on it, which is known as the dark web. Number 52. First things first, the dark web is not to be confused with the deep web. The deep web is a part of the internet that is encrypted and hidden from conventional search engines. This is mostly stuff like special private web forums or even your own online email account. The dark web is a tiny part of that part, like a particularly nasty crumb in a massive hidden internet cake. Number 53. The deep web is apparently 500 times the size of the surface web, which is what we call the rest of the internet. Number 54. The dark web is basically the internet's version of the black market. It's rumoured to sell things like less than legal pornography, weaponry, forged documents and drugs. Number 55. Journalists and whistleblowers, as in political informers, not referees, use the deep web to communicate information as it's extremely difficult, if not impossible, to track who's saying what. Number 56. Drugs being sold on the internet isn't actually an especially new thing. The first thing ever to be bought over the internet, or rather the ARPANET thing again, was actually marijuana, way back in 1971. Number 57. Nowadays though, it's on a much bigger scale. One such dark web black market drug website, Silk Road, not only sounds like the name of a sitcom starring old women living on a street, but it also processed an estimated 30 to 45 million dollars a year in drug sales. Number 58. Customers of these websites don't pay with traditional cash, nor in hugs or chocolate money, but actually in an anonymous cryptocurrency called Bitcoin. At the time of current rambling, one Bitcoin is equal to 284 US dollars. Number 59. The dark web is even rumoured to sell Hitman contracts, and I don't mean the video game. Number 60. The dark web can be accessed through special anonymous browsers such as Tor, which is an acronym for the Onion Router, because we all know how nefarious onions are. Look at them, the bastards. Number 61. Whoa, 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 it's okay. Don't get too scared of the deep web and those dastardly onions because the internet can be a nice place too. In fact, there's a website called the nicest place on the inter.net, which is a continuous loop of hugs set to music, which is now my homepage. Number 62. There's even a website with a designated button to click on to make everything okay. Number 63. The internet can also do a whole wagon load of good too. For instance, in 2012, charity donation website Just Giving reported the internet had collectively donated £1.5 million to charity. Nintendo, I mean number 64. In 2012, a homeless veteran lost his dog in the mountains of Utah and was heartbroken. His friend blogged about it and within 24 hours, commenters had found the dog and the best pals were reunited once more. Number 65. The internet, more specifically Reddit, also helped to make a lonely 10 year old boy's birthday party amazing with 300 people turning up to his bash, and people sending him gifts from as far as China. Number 66. Kevin Campbell was a man desperately in need of a kidney transplant, and reached out to Facebook for help. 
Through lots of clicks and sharing, the story reached a distant relative of his, who agreed to donate one of his kidneys and saved his life. Number 67. He's a bit like Marmite, either you love him or hate him and he looks like he tastes really nice on toast, but Swedish king of YouTube PewDiePie and his army of bros have donated over $1 million to various charities, including Save the Children and Charity Water. Number 68. The internet can also be a bloody good detective as well. An image circulated around the website 4chan of some Burger King workers standing in containers of lettuce. Those scarily clever people on 4chan managed to track down the restaurant and the salad stomping employee, and he was fired the next day. You know what they say, you don't win friends with stomped on salad. Number 69. Hey, you know this kid, otherwise known as the meme success kid. Well, his real name is Sam, not me, and his father Justin needed a new kidney. And so they turned to the internet for a helping hand. And they got it, well, 100,965 helping hands to be precise, otherwise known as dollars. Number 70. The internet is full of memes like Success Kid, but what the heck is a meme exactly? Those cheeky chaps at the dictionary say a meme is a cultural item in the form of an image, video, phrase, etc. that's spread via the internet and often altered in a creative or humorous way. Number, number 71. The word meme was actually coined by God botherer Richard Dawkins in 1971, but it meant something completely different to do with Darwinian principles or something. Let's just, let's just save that for another video, yeah? Number 72. Eternal optimist and bane of people's lives Rick Astley is one such meme, whose 1987 tune Never Gonna Give You Up is the subject of rogue linking in a practice called Rick Rolling. The very first Rick Roll was on 4chan in March of 2007, after a poster promised it was the link to the trailer for the video game Grand Theft Auto 4. Number 73! When the video reached 39 million views on YouTube, Astley received a royalty check for a whopping $12. It's now at 150 million views, so Astley could maybe afford. Mm, one counselling session? Number 74. The subjects of memes often find it quite hard to cope with their unexpected rise to fame. In fact, the girl from the annoying Facebook girl meme apparently received advice from the scumbag Steve guy about how to cope with her newfound memedom. Number 75. 78% of web traffic in the US is from watching videos. And you've made a bloody fine choice with this one too. Well done. Number 76. USA Today readers voted the internet as one of the modern seven wonders of the world way back in 2007. Number 77. Do you remember dial-up internet? That thing from ancient history that made you connect to the internet while blaring this sound? Well, it's not so ancient for some people. In fact, approximately 2 million Americans still use dial-up AOL internet connection. Number 78. The way we look at the great magical internet in the sky is constantly changing. As of 2014, for example, on average we consume the web on mobile devices more than we do on desktops. Number 79. This is all very well and good and exquisitely edited and sexually explained, I hear you say, but how many horses would it take to power the internet? Well, it's estimated the internet takes 50 million horsepower to actually keep up and running. So that's 50 million horses. I mean, that's how horsepower works, right? Number 80. Like most things, the internet actually has a weight. Made up of all the electrons that are in motion while the internet works away fetching those requests that you have, the internet's weight is about 50 grams. I bet it all goes on its thighs too. Number 81. That 50 grams stretches all the way to outer space, including the International Space Station, where they've had internet connection since 2010. So now potential alien invaders could pick up a Wi-Fi hotspot and see what we're all about before having a go at conquering the world. Number 82. In fact, the International Space Station had faster internet connection than Australia did at one point. Number 83. If you ever fancy escaping the internet altogether, then don't go to Mount Everest, because now you can access 3G internet there too. So now you can like and comment on your tedious cousin Derek's pictures of his new bike, even while defying death at Everest's peak. Number 84. Sometimes things can be a bit slow in rural England, so crazy experiments are done to liven things up. One such experiment in 2010 tested whether or not pigeons carrying a USB stick were faster than uploading a video file to the web using countryside broadband. The pigeons actually won. By the time they got to their location, the video file had only uploaded 24% of its contents. Number 85. Out of the million most accessed sites in the world, only 4% of them are pornographic in nature. That's still around 40,000 sites. Must have been a uh, fun afternoon's research. Number 86. Catholicism even has a patron saint of the internet. His name is St Isidore of Seville, but you probably know him better by his screen name of St Izzy Sev 777. Number 87. 
So basically, nobody's surprised. The most accessed website in the world is Google, according to Alexa. Alexa, by the way, is a global traffic monitoring website, not this lady. Number 88. Domain names, i.e. the bit that you type in to make your fave websites come up, are mostly only allowed to be 63 characters long. So, www.101facts is the greatest YouTube channel ever and that Sam dude sounds real hot.com would unfortunately be one character too long, sadly. And I assume that's the only reason it's never been made. Number 89. Speaking of domain names, the first .com registered domain was a website called Symbolics.com, established by a computer company in 1985. Number 90. The most expensive domain name ever bought was carinsurance.com which was bought for $49.7 million. God. Number 91. One bloke named Mike Mann once bought nearly 15,000 domain names in one day in order to sell them on for lots more money. When asked why, he replied, I'm just really greedy. Well, at least he's honest. Number 92. Wi-Fi is one of the greatest things about living in this century, like an invisible bungee to escape plummeting into boredom. Contrary to popular belief, Wi-Fi doesn't actually stand for anything. It was just called that because it rhymed with hi-fi and was easy to remember. Number 93. Way back in 2003, the tiny country of Niue in the South Pacific Ocean was the first nation to become a Wi-Fi nation, where free Wi-Fi is available to everybody. They've also had Pokemon, Star Wars, and Disney on their official currency. BRB, just moving there. Number 94. Some airlines offer Wi-Fi in their cabins, and for that we have to thank... Potatoes. Sorry, is that right? Okay then. Potatoes absorb Wi-Fi radio signals in the same way that the human body does, meaning airlines were able to test whether or not it was a possibility with sacks of spuds as substitutes. Plus, after testing, the crew probably got hash browns for dinner too. What a result. Number 95. Back in 1996, a computer industry columnist named Bob Metcalf predicted the World Wide Web would have a catastrophic collapse in 1997. When 1997 came around, he tore the article up, put it in a blender, and drank the yummy, incorrect, foresight-flavoured cocktail on stage in front of a cheering crowd. Number 96? Let's hop into our DeLorean, which is bigger on the inside, and look forward to the future. By 2020, it's estimated that 90% of all cars will be connected to the web, meaning you could live-tweet your traffic jam for the entertainment of dozens. Number 97. The Internet of Things, which are interconnected smart products that are online and linked to each other, like toasters and thermostats, is said to grow to 25 billion devices by 2020. By the way, Internet of Things? That sounds like the most made up on the spot name I've ever heard. Number 98. Even garbage containers are predicted to be connected via Wi Fi to observe trash levels, meaning the phrase, this internet connection is rubbish, could take on a whole new life of its own. Number 99. Some of these things already exist, but they need to be beefed up security-wise. In 2015, hackers were able to break into Google Mail accounts by sneakily coding their way into Samsung smart fridges. I don't know what's worse, the possibility of that or the possibility of someone hacking into my fridge to make my beers warm. Number 100! There are seven keepers of the keys of the internet, who were there to either restart or turn off the internet in case of a global catastrophe or terrorist act. Let's never, ever, ever, like, ever piss them off. Number 101. This may shock you, but you are on the internet right now. That right there was 101 facts about the internet, and I don't know about you, but I for one had a lovely time. If you want some more 101 facts, say about Skywalkers, secret agents, or your sleeping brain, then click on any of these to go fact yourself. Or, if you fancy getting the very newest 101 videos straight to your feed, click on this internet surfing, whistle blowing, gift giving goat to get subscribed. You know, I think this internet thing is really going to be big one day. I said the same thing about Tamagotchis and Jamiroquai, and look at them now. You can barely turn a street corner without seeing one of them these days. It's virtual insanity. See what I did there with the virtual insanity? Oh, dear me. I'm off to watch the nicest place on the internet for a bit with a tub of ice cream and a mug of hot milk. Bye-bye.